Two in a row for the Eagles as they knocked off NC State on the road. We're going to look at their win. Also, we're going to talk a lot about Richie Gannell no longer coaching at Boston College. All of this and more on today's Locked On Boston College. You are Locked On Boston College, your daily podcast on the Boston College Eagles, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This is AJ Black. Thank you all for listening. Today's episode is brought to you by Run Your Pool, your go-to place for brackets during March Madness. On today's show, we're going to look at BC winning their second straight ACC game. On Wednesday night, they played at NC State, a game at a uh, uh, a venue they hadn't won in over a decade against a, as I said before on yesterday's show, a really bad NC State team. And going into this game, you wouldn't know it was a bad NC State game team because they were, Boston College was a six point underdog heading into this game. Well, the Eagles got some good news before the game even started as DeMar Langford was dressed and ready to play. Now, he didn't start. BC went with their small lineup and they had Brevin Galloway out there along with Quinton Post. Uh, so not really small, but they had an extra guard out there. Um, and Langford came off the bench throughout the night. Again, just like the Florida State game, Boston College comes out flying. They build up a huge lead. They, they're up by, well, not huge, 11-point well, lead. That's still pretty good. And NC State is a gigantic mess. They're turning over the ball. BC's making them pay. You're getting big uh, buckets from Quinton Post and Jaden Zachary. And it looks like BC is going to run away with this game. But at the end of the first half, NC State starts to slide back into it. And they only are down by two. They start hitting some shots. Uh, their big player, Quavian Smith, goes on a 7-0 run as uh, the Wolfpack start to slide back into this game. But just like against Florida State, Boston College takes those punches and delivers a sucker punch to knock out the Wolfpack. And that's exactly what happened here. Now, BC, uh, you know, they needed some big buckets. And again, it was Post and Zachary all over again. And if you are not into BC sports, right, uh, basketball because of the years of ineptitude and you're like, oh, they're 11 and 16 and, you know, whatever, you really need to watch this team. I'm telling you right now, Jaden Zachary is going to be a star. I said this on Twitter. He's going to be a star. He finished this game with 16 points uh, just uh, uh, two days after scoring 18 points. He had five, uh, three assists, three rebounds, three steals, and only two turnovers. Every time Boston College needs a play, Jaden Zachary is there, either on the defensive end or on the offensive end, because on defense, he is he's there. And, you know, it's been a while since BC's had a guard with the energy that Zachary has. You know, he's not the best shooter. He's not a guy that, you know, he was three for five from three-point range, uh, but he's not like a huge volume scorer, like maybe like Jerome Robinson or Kai Bowman. But he's a good scorer, and he gets those buckets. He's a smart shooter. He's a smart player. And it just begs the question, because he's a Juco player, what has Boston College missed over the last 30 plus years? Because we, you know, the school has been so regimented against Juco's and now you get one and you've seen what he can do. So BC, you know, down the stretch, they put the game away. They build the, build the lead up back up to 13 to, to uh, thir- uh, a 13 point lead. They end up winning by eight. It's their second straight ACC win uh, for a team that many you know, all the pundits you can find out there had them winning zero ACC games. They're up to six already. They're 11 and 16, six and 11 in the conference, and they are building serious momentum heading into 2022. And I know there's still two or uh, there's still three games left in the season. They have to play Clemson, Miami, and Georgia Tech. And then there's the ACC tournament. So you don't want to give up on this season, but you can already start to see where this program is heading. And that is exciting because next year, you lose Makai Ashton Langford, which is a bummer, but <clears throat> I don't think it's it's something that you can't build off of. James Karnick, I, I hey, I was not the biggest fan of him heading into the season. He struggled under Jim Christian, but he has turned into a nice player. He had 11 points and nine rebounds. Like every, you know, he's had his moments this year where he's looked really, really good, and I think he'll be missed. But you're bringing in a uh, four new freshmen 
Two of them are four stars. Two of them are still super solid. I mean, just look at Donald Hand and Prince Aligby. You can see where you put them with the guy, with Post and Zachary and um, Demara Langford next year. You can see where this program's heading, and it's exciting. But there's still some good games left. That On Saturday, they're going to play Clemson, a team they've already beat, and they get them at home this time. It's senior day, so they're going to celebrate Brevin Galloway, Makai Ashton Langford, TJ Bickerstaff, um, and James Karnick as it's their last home game. But there's a possibility here. BC's at six wins now in the conference. Miami's good. That's going to be a tough lo- That's going to be a tough one for them. But they get Georgia Tech, who's a train wreck right now. They get Clemson, who they've beaten. Eight wins in conference. That is a as I've said, I said it on Monday. This is a mammoth win for Earl Grant. Again, two straight wins against ACC and opponents. And yes, Florida State was bad. NC State was bad. But Steve Donahue and um, Jim Christian. They would lose these games. I'm telling you, they lose. They lost dumb games a lot, and that was what kind of sunk them. Earl Grant is is taking care of business in these games. He's winning the ones that they needed to win, and they're doing it. And they're building. They're building up guys that you're gonna want to watch next year. And I think that is what's exciting about this team. And I think that is why the next three games for BC basketball are going to be must watch games. If you're a BC fan, and it's time to get in that band bandwagon because this program's going somewhere. It's time to get more people into Conti Forum because they deserve some respect. Because this team, I mean, they're 11 and 16. So for the folks out there going, oh yeah, they're still under 500. Remember where the expectations are were for this team. BC is on the verge of being in the eighth or ninth seed in the ACC. That is a huge step in the right direction in just year one for Earl Grant. In a moment, we're going to chat about a coaching change. I had just said yesterday that BC was done with their coaching changes. They're not done. There's one more to talk about. But March Madness is only a few weeks away. That means you need to start thinking now about where you're going to be running your brackets this year. Are you going to go be going for the usual? Are you looking for the best? We've done our homework here, and we're running brackets with RunYourPool.com. Along with standard picks, Run Your Pool offers game types like Survivor or Pick X. Both are really fun in their own way. you got to check them out. They have their options to edit scoring, and they offer more intel to make your picks. All stuff you won't find on ESPN, Yahoo, or CBS. If you got a business, Run Your Pool can help you take some of the ma- madness magic and play alongside your employees or even gain customers. Plus, they offer full white glove customer support, custom branding, and one of the easiest three-minute setups that you'll ever find. Clearly, we believe in Run Your Pool because, like I said, we're running our brackets there yourselves. Check it out. We're going to be having it and announcing it soon. There's no truer test than that. If you want to play against us for a shot at cash prizes, join us at runyourpool.com slash locked on. And while you're there, create your own pool for your friends and family. Enter Pure Madness at checkout for $10 off your custom pool. All the rules and details will be available there. That's runyourpool.com slash locked on for your chance to win a cash prize. We look forward to seeing and beating you there. This is Locked On Boston College, AJ Black. So as I said like two days ago, I expected Boston College to be completely done with their coaching changes after Joe Daly left to go to uh, Carolina and they had hired um, Daryl Wyatt as their new wide receiver coach. Well, I was wrong. As the changes continue to happen for Boston College football, as I I broke the news this morning, uh, I know some other people were saying they broke it. I definitely had it first, and I I got I got to take my humble brag here. I had it. I reached out to Boston College. I got the news. I had it up really early in the morning that Rich Gannell, their wide receiver coach, is no longer with the program. And now, no, sorry, running backs coach Rich Richie Gannell. Now Richie Gannell was a wide receiver for Boston College in the 2000s, you know, with the Matt Ryan teams. He ended up playing with the Kansas City Chiefs in the NFL for a hot second before he was released and then started his coaching career. I believe he coached at MIT, or no, sorry, Tufts, before he ended up at Boston College when he was hired by Steve Adazio to coach the wide receivers. Now, he ended up being the interim head coach for BC 
in their bowl game against Cincinnati after Steve Adazio was fired. And Jeff Halfley kept him on, but not as a wide receivers coach, but as a running backs coach for the last two seasons. Now, the first season for Boston College running backs was a complete disaster. In 2020, the running backs could not do anything. David Bailey was bad, and they just couldn't get their, their running. Their running attack was so bad that Boston College basically had to become air raid because they couldn't move the ball on the ground. Big, 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 scary year. Then last year, to the credit of Gannell. The running backs did improve. Pat Garwo averaged 5.2 yards per carry and ran for over 1,000 yards in a breakout season for the youngster. However, the running game still was not all that effective. Garwo had his moments, but you saw guys like Levy, Travis Levy, and Alex Sinkfield. You know, they had their moments, but it was always inconsistent. And especially in certain areas, they just couldn't get the ball going. And so, Gannell, he falls in the same trap as some of these other guys. Now, he's gone. So, what does Boston College do from here? Now, I had been saying all along, if you go back, yesterday I was saying I was wrong about this, but in fact, I was right. I just didn't see the, the move happening the way it did, that Savon Huggins would be the running backs coach. Well, Savon Huggins is the running backs coach now. And uh, that wasn't because Richie Gannell moved to wide receivers. It's because Richie Gannell's out of a job. So Savon Huggins, if you have, you know, he was a five, I usually the four or five star recruit that went to Rutgers uh, and started his coaching career at UMass. He was going to be their, um, I think he was going to be their offensive coordinator or running backs coach. Ended up at BC as an assistant running backs coach and basically took the job. He is interesting because I had I had said on last yesterday's show when we were talking about recruiting and, and different coaches, I was a little concerned about where New Jersey was going to be because BC lost Joe Daly, who is one of the, the their key recruiters in that state. But they now have Savon Huggins, who is e- a, e- as big a name in that state as Joe Daly, um, but now he can be the full recruiter that you would want at that position. So Huggins will jump up and take that spot. Now, Gannell, you know, I don't have anything negative to say. Like, if you go back and look at his body of work, take out the, your your love of Richie Gannell. Because believe me, I remember, you know, him telling off Notre Dame's quarterback getting in his face and and that kind of stuff and all the big catches and him being the leader for BC football, you you have to take off the maroon and gold lenses here because if you just hire every BC football player that you love, BC would be terrible. Is Savon Huggins an upgrade over Joe Daly? I mean, over Rich Gannell? Yes. Gannell on the recruiting trail, he grabbed Lewis Bond and Dante Reynolds. You know, he was definitely involved in some of these these coaching moves and, and recruiting moves. But was he like a huge impact on this team? No, he wasn't. And you know, there's nothing. I I've talked to Richie Gannell before. I talked to him at, at interviews. Super nice guy, and he's obviously a humongous you know BC football. Legend. I don't know if legend's the right word, but like former star. But credit to Jeff Halfley, he made the move. And we'll talk a little bit in a moment about why I'm impressed with what Jeff Halfley has done. But Gannell, you know, I don't think he had to have to, he didn't, he had to be on this roster. He was a holdover from Steve Adazio. He was not. You know, I think Jeff Halfley did a solid to the BC community to keep him here so that he could have some, you know, some street cred. You know about getting a guy that BC has had in the past and very liked by fans, and that was it. Um, but you know, we'll talk. We'll talk just in a moment because I want to get into where Halfley's mindset. I think it's at, and again, uh, this is all just my my kind of opinion on where he is thinking. But before we do that, I want to thank each and every one of you that has been listening, and I want to thank specifically. All of you that have been listening on YouTube, because I see more and more and more listen. My my l- listenership on YouTube has been going through the roof, and so if you have done that, that's great. And if you haven't, and you have the opportunity to listen on YouTube, please do. 
just look up on YouTube, Locked On Boston College. All my newest episodes are up on there. And it's an easy way to do it. And listen, listening to us on YouTube actually helps more than if you listen to us on Spotify or Apple iTunes. So go to YouTube. If you're if you're at work, if you like listening to Lockdown Boston College, if you were like your first listen and it's at work and you're on your work computer and you're not like you won't get in trouble for listening to YouTube on there, do it on YouTube. It helps a ton. And hit that subscribe button. It takes 10 seconds. It's free. It doesn't cost anything. And it does, as I said, it is a huge help for this podcast. So each of you that have already subscribed on 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 YouTube, thank you. And for all of you that are about to do that, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, in a moment, we're going to chat about Jeff Halfley's coaching moves. I want to a lot talk about where I think his mind is at and kind of look at the whole scope of what BC has done. Well, football may be over this season, but basketball is in full steam for both pro and college hoops. From all the co- latest odds, totals, player performances, and to where the next coach is going to land, BetOnline.net is the number one spot for all your sports betting needs. BetOnline remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just basketball. BetOnline.net is your source for hockey, boxing, and UFC odds right to the latest Olympic coverage and information. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn about the trends in action. Head on over to BetOnline, where the game starts. All right, this is Locked On Boston College. We've been talking about coaching changes. We First segment, we talked about basketball. Now we talked about Richie Gannell losing his job. So this is four coaching changes for Boston College since the end of 2021. A big move saying that since in 2020, they didn't move on anyone. And interestingly enough, all of the coaching changes have been on the offensive side of the ball. You lost Frank Signetti to Pitt. You lost Matt Applebaum to the Miami Dolphins, Joe Daly to the Carolina Panthers, and Rich Gannell to the unemployment line. I don't know where he's going. It's just not with Boston College. Uh, there has been no news if he's going somewhere. If this, I, I have nothing on why he got he's let go. I just know he's no longer on the staff. Okay, but why? If you look at the grand scheme of things here, what is going on? And you could just say that the, I, at first I thought when you're looking at this coaching staff moves, I thought, okay, so Signetti probably got some extra money. He's going to pit. And some of these other guys, you know, it's NFL jobs. But now that it's four out of five of the offensive line, offensive coaches, Steve Shimko, the tight end coach, is the only one left from 2021. There, there has to be more to this story than just money and new jobs. Because remember, Matt Applebaum... You know, he took another job. He, I mean, he was offered another job in 2020 and he declined it in the NFL. So something changed there. And Pitt is not a team that's going to outpay BC by that much, especially given what I've heard that BC's been able to put up more money to keep guys like AAR as our Abdul Rahim. So that makes me think, first of all, that my, my, thesis right now is that Jeff Halfley was not happy with how the offense went last year. And that is with Phil Dracovic or with Dennis Grossell. I bet you, I'm guessing he was really upset with how Dennis Grossell was treated because I know Halfley really liked him. And as you guys all saw, there was no way that offense was running like with, with Grossell. And he could have also been upset that there was no other option for him. So I think my guess is that no, Frank Signetti wasn't fired. I'm betting that he was offered the job by Pitt and Boston College probably had the opportunity to match that. And I'm guessing they probably didn't. Uh, that's just, that's my, my perception of the situation. And then once he goes, you know, he's the head. He's the, he's the head that moves the body. All the underlings kind of, all his positional coaches are like, could see the right writing on the wall and decided to make their move. And it probably, I don't, again, none of these guys were fired, but I could, I could see them being kind of encouraged to go find other jobs um, because that was just, you know, based off of what happened at the end of that season. So I, at the end of the day, I'm encouraged by Jeff Halfley because as we've said on the show, he's a nice guy. He's very personable to talk to. He is engaging. He's, you know, he's a good face for the program. He's not the gym teacher that Steve Adazio was, but he, to be a good football coach, you need to be ruthless as well. You need to be able to make those moves and, and cut coaches when it's not working. 
And Jeff Halfley did exactly that this year. You know, he, pro- he it seems to me that he was not happy with how this offense went, and he just made the moves to, to cut everyone. And the only one he kept was Steve Shimko, who's got two years of good tight end play to sit back on. He was one of the clear guys that hasn't had those big issues over the last two years. So I th- I'm impressed because I wanted to see what Halfley had in him when things got tough, when he had to go out there and make those moves. Was he really going to be the nice guy that you see at press conferences or in ads and things like that? No. he's He's got that football coach mentality in him, which is good because that's what good program coaches need. They need someone who will cut bait, when things aren't working and move on and get those new guys so that you can get it to work. And it is so important that he did it this year because you have one more year of Phil Dracovic and Zay Flowers and you have a brand new offensive line. So what does he do? He gets a new offensive coordinator who brings in a little bit more um, panache to that offense. It's not just pro style. It's got some college elements, as, as John McNulty has said. He does that and then he brings in a veteran offensive line coach to work with potentially four new offensive linemen that are going to be with Christian Mahogany. You needed a veteran that has tons of experience. He did that. He And then he improved and, and brought veterans in at wide receiver coach and, and brings in an exciting young coach at running backs. I think that's a good move. I think these are all in, in – the grand scheme of things works well. And I, I know, I know some of you are really sad that Richie Gunnell's leaving that, you know, he's a fan favorite. He was one of the, uh, you know, when you, whenever you have a long time Boston college player on your coaching staff, it's always a nice thing, but do you want nice stories or do you want to win? Do you want to see BC take that next step? Or are you just complacent because you like the maroon and gold guys coming back? If you really want BC to go up and take that, that take that brass ring, you got to trust that Halfley's doing the right thing, because I know all of you and I. I was voicing some of my concerns at the end of that season too. Were were perturbed with how that offense went, and he had to make that move, and he did it, and he did it decisively, and he did it across the board to all guys affected by that, and that's what a good coach does, and. You have to be. You have to. You can be sad that that Gunnell's gone, but you can also be excited that you have a head coach that knows what to do when he needs to do it. On tomorrow's show, we're going to wrap up our week talking about everything going on with BC Sports. We'll preview the weekend. We'll talk a little bit about lacrosse and everything in between. Thank you all for listening. You can follow me on Twitter at ajblack underscore bc. You can follow me on Twitter, uh, the site on Twitter at lockdownbc. And again, check us out on YouTube. Thank you all for listening, and we'll see you all again soon. Take care, everyone.